Hello and welcome to our lesson today. This course is presented by Kajiko and Associates. Kajiko and Associates assists accounting professionals and small and medium enterprises in their careers and business respectfully to achieve their goals. Our mission is to be the leading accountants, trainers, and business advisors through the adoption of emerging technologies and industry best practices. Our vision is to be the practice of choice in accounting, taxation, and training services in the growing Kenyan market. In this lesson, we will learn all about the pay as you earn. This is the system of taxing employment income. Later on, we will learn how to file pay as you earn in iTax. Pay as you earn is a method of collecting tax from individuals in gainful employment. Pay as you earn is deducted by the employer and remitted to Kenya Revenue Authority on behalf of the employee. As a rule of thumb, all employment incomes are subject to tax with a few exceptions as we will see later in this course. Pay as you earn is covered in Section 5 of the Income Tax Act Chapter 470, first published in the year 1975, revised in the year 2012, and lately in the year 2018. The Income Tax Act should be read together with amendments thereof. These amendments are always introduced through a finance bill every time the budget is read by the Finance Cabinet Secretary in June. You will be able to download a copy of the Act for further reference later in this course. Let's now look at how pay as you earn is administered. There are three main players in pay as you earn. That is Kenya Revenue Authority the employer and the employee. The employee offers services to the employer in exchange for employment income, usually known as salary or wages. The employer deducts PAY from the employer and remits it to Kenya Revenue Authority. Kenya Revenue Authority collects tax on behalf of the government. It is the responsibility of the employer to deduct and remit PAY to Kenya Revenue Authority. This is confusing, for example if you look at how iTax deals with the filing of annual income for employees. Employees who had taxes deducted from their salaries and their employers have not submitted the PAYE to Kenya Revenue Authority are left with tax arrears and penalties in iTax, whereas the employers could be in good books with KRA. So, who is a resident for tax purposes? The Income Tax Act defines a resident as a person who has a permanent home in Kenya and was in the country for any period. Or a person without a permanent home in Kenya but was present in Kenya for 183 days or more in that year of income, or present in Kenya in that year of income and in each of the two preceding years of income for periods averaging more than 122 days in each year of income. Income subject to pay as you earn include Cash benefits These include salary, transport allowance, bonus, commissions, etc. Non-cash benefits exceeding Kenya shillings 3,000 per month or Kenya shillings 36,000 per year. These include benefits in kind, for example, airtime and housing provided by the employer. Per diem exceeding Kenya shillings 2,000 per day. So, what is per diem? Per diem are monies paid to employees working out of their station for sustenance. This may include taxi fees, accommodation costs, food, etc. Pension exceeding Kenya shillings 300,000 per annum or Kenya shillings 25,000 per month is also subject to tax. Now, let us look at how housing benefits are taxed under pay as you earn. The housing benefit is taxed at the higher of 15% of total income or fair market rental value or the actual rent paid by the employer. For example, an employee's gross income is Kenya shillings 100,000. The fair market value of the premises they live in is Kenya shillings 20,000 and then the employer is paying Kenya shillings 10,000. What will be the taxable benefit? If you said Kenya shillings 20,000, you are right. 
The numbers to compare here are 15% of Kenya shillings 100,000 which is equivalent to Kenya shillings 15,000. Kenya shillings 20,000 which is the fair market value of the premises. And Kenya shillings 10,000 which is the actual rent paid. The higher of these values is Kenya shillings 20,000. Next, we will review taxation of car benefit. The taxable benefit for the private use of an employer-provided motor vehicle shall be the higher of the rate determined by the commissioner and the prescribed rate of benefit at 2% per month of the initial cost of the vehicle. Where the vehicle is leased or hired from a third party, the benefit will be equal to the cost of hiring or leasing the motor vehicle. Next, we look at fringe benefits tax. Fringe benefits tax is a tax charged in respect of a loan provided to an employee, director, or their relatives at an interest rate lower than the market interest rate. If, for example, an employer extends a Kenya shillings 1 million loan to an employee at 5% and the market rate of interest, which is usually referenced from 91 days treasury bills is at 10%, then the employer will be liable to pay tax on the amount equivalent to the difference between the interest payable at market rate which is 100,000 and interest charged at the employer reduced rate which is 50,000. Fringe benefit tax will be applied on the resultant amount of Kenya shillings 50,000 at the corporate rate of tax that is 30%. The employer, therefore, will pay tax equivalent to Kenya shillings 15,000. Taxation of other benefits. Other benefits are subjected to tax at the higher of cost to employer or fair market value. Where the cost or fair market value cannot be determined. The benefits are taxed at a prescribed rate through the concession of commissioner of income tax. It is worth to mention that Furniture provided by the employer is taxed at 1% of the original cost per month. Use of communal water supply provided by the employer is taxed at Kenya shillings 500 per month. Telephone for personal use provided by the employer, whether landline or mobile, is taxed as benefit at 30% of bills per month. Last but not least, communal electricity supply provided by the employer is taxed at Kenya shillings 1,500 per month. In the last few slides, we have taken our time looking at how employment income and benefits thereof are taxed. In the next slide, we will look at allowable deductions against taxable income. Allowable deductions reduce taxable income. This needs to be differentiated from reliefs, which reduce the tax payable. We will be looking at reliefs in the next part of this training. The most common allowable deductions are Pension contribution Home ownership savings plan and Owner-occupied interest Pension contribution by employee to a registered pension scheme are tax allowable to the maximum of Kenya shillings 20,000 per month. For pay as you earn purposes, please note that contributions to NHIF are considered as pension contributions. If an employer provides a home ownership savings plan, employees' contributions to the maximum of Kenya shillings 4,000 will be allowed against taxable income per month. Lastly, any interest paid against the mortgage for a home occupied by the employee is an allowable deduction against taxable income to the maximum of Kenya shillings 12,500 per month. And that was the end of our part 1 training on pay as you earn. In this lesson, we have looked at various types of employment income subject to pay as you earn. In addition, we have looked at how each income derived from employment is treated for tax purposes. We have also looked at the allowable deductions against employment income. Please look out for our next lesson in this series that will cover Reliefs allowed against pay as you earn how lump sum payments, like gratuity, are taxed. Penalties for non-compliance with pay-as-you-earn rules. And most importantly, how to make a pay-as-you-earn return on iTax. We appreciate you for watching this video, please give us your feedback by commenting. While you are there don't forget to like and subscribe so that you don't miss the next parts.
You can find us on LinkedIn, Facebook, WhatsApp, Instagram, and Twitter under the name Kajiko and Associates. Kajiko and Associates. True and fair.